few months ago, I moved on to a boat, but not just any boat, a traditional wooden Polynesian sailing boat. I know a lot of people are scared of the ocean, but I've always wondered, what's it like to spend a night at sea? I mean, you're basically living on a floating piece of wood in the middle of the ocean. I want to know what it feels like. So after doing a bit of research, I found this captain and his very special traditional sailing boat. He built it 10 years ago and has been sailing it around the world ever since. Now he's embarking on another epic trip. He wants to sail from Portugal to Cape Verde and then across the Atlantic and he's looking for a crew. Now I've never sailed in my life, but I am really intrigued and I want to learn more about this man who lives off the grid. So I decided to join him on the first leg of the journey along the coast of Portugal, from the top of the river Tagus down to Faro. And just like that, I'm off to Portugal. My plan was to fly to Lisbon, spend the night, then take the train up the river to this location I was sent where Captain and the boat were supposedly waiting for me and where the adventure would begin. Well, that's what I thought. Little did I know that the series of crazy events would start way before the actual sailing. Because just one hour into the flight, the pilots invited me into the cockpit for landing as they found out that I was trying to get a shot of the sunset from my aisle seat. I'm talking to the people on the ground and I can hear everything they're saying, it's so interesting. I think there's something really thrilling about arriving in a new place in the middle of the night. I've never been to Portugal before and it's impossible to make assumptions when all you can see are the city lights in the dark. But for me, that makes it twice as exciting to wake up in the morning. Wow, that was incredible. This is Danielle, Francisco's friend. You know Francisco if you've seen my Lebanon videos. Uh, he was very kind to let me stay at his place. Oh, I'm so nervous. This is actually happening. This is my first time actually seeing Portugal during the day. Danielle here is kindly giving me a lift. I feel totally unprepared. I packed twice this morning because I didn't know what to pack with me. Yeah, I'm just like overthinking everything. What are you supposed to bring on a sailing trip? What about water? I have a water bottle. But, uh, for oh, yeah, one um, week? Oh, no, no, no. I, actually, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just thinking about this for the first time. Like when you're on the ocean, it's like salt water. <laughs> you, need, you need water. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to embrace the fact that I don't know anything and I'm learning. And you're learning from my mistakes. All right. Well, thank you so much for the lift. Bye bye. Before doing anything, one thing that I do need is seasickness pills because I'm really scared of getting seasick. So I'm gonna get some pills in there. I got the seasickness tablets. They cost me 10 euros. Hopefully I won't need them, but if I do, then they better work. <laughs> now, I still had a bit of time to kill before my train. So I decided to explore the area and after walking for a bit, I met a group of girls sitting in the grass. Carolina. Uh, yeah. Exactly. This is Carolina and this is Beatrice. That was really good. <laughs> My new friends start telling me all about the Portuguese identity and culture. We are a small country and people think that Portugal is part of Spain, which is not. No. no. <laughs> we have a flag. Okay. History. Your identity of your own, your culture. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I need to go to this train station now. Of course, I'm running late. Even the train stations here are so colorful. Santana Cartacho. Uh, one ticket. Yes, please. Oh my god. Now I'm running late. <laughs> Thankfully, I barely make it onto the train, and my one hour journey up along the river begins. I just got off the train and uh, it feels like I'm in the middle of the Portuguese countryside. I walked out and there I met the motorbike taxi man that Captain had sent to pick me up. It's an Uber. And together we rode across the countryside all the way to the little village where the boat was parked. This guy just dropped me off with his uh, motorbike and now I'm just gonna try and see if I can find Captain. Hello! Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you! Hi! <laughs> how do I get on? Hello! I got onto the boat, Captain prepared some tea, and then we started talking. And I quickly realized that he's a fascinating guy, a real living book. He's literally been all over the world and has collected so many stories over the years. Let's go to Brazil. Let's go to Brazil, go to French Guinea. Brazil has become too dangerous for... for yeah, you get pirates. And... No, it's horrible. I've been ten times to Brazil and every time I had action. Me, I carry on to the Caribbean. Have you done the Pacific Ocean? Times. I think it's just huge. It's a commitment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unimaginable. I've been to East Island, I've been everywhere. 
What are these for, Walter? For water, yeah. How do you know all this about the wind? Is it just you it's, feel it's, it? These are calabatic winds. Land is warming up, the sea is cold, so now so it's flowing. Oh, yeah. Oak tunnels, the tree tunnels in Cornwall, yeah. they were made by the British Navy in the 18th century to repair ships. So they were, like, as they were growing, they would move them? So they're all natural grown Naturally ribs. Naturally shaped like that. Wow. Ribs. How cool is that, right? I spent the rest of the afternoon slowly discovering the boat. And let me tell you, it was a lot cooler than I could have ever imagined. There's so many cables and ropes that I don't understand. In the one hall, there's lots of sleeping bunks, surfboards, a library. And then on the other side, there's a full-on kitchen. You see the head? Yeah. It's not easy to see, is it? From? The Galapagos, of course. Where else do you find seals? What is there to do in Tuvalu? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You've got one road. It goes from one end of the island to the other, which is about five k's long. Get a motorbike and go across. Yeah, where when the aircraft comes, somebody with a bicycle and a bell drives around. It goes bling bling bling. It was in at night when it's hot. Everybody sleeps on the tarmac. When was the last time you were there? Back when I was there in 2006. Long enough. It hasn't changed much, I promise you. We spent the rest of the afternoon and evening getting to know each other over a delicious dinner. Uh, how long years I've had a jacket? At least 10 years. $2.50 in a Fijian thrift shop. That's yours. Yeah, thank you. Where is it from? Portugal, of course. Duh. Cheers. It's a dry taro. I wonder if it's still good. Where do you oh, get those? Did I buy those? Three months ago. Yeah, and they stay good for it's a long time. Forever. This is my salt. Really? From I, where? From the islands. Oh, wow. Well, I'm learning so much already. I just asked if this was the front or the back of the boat and he just looked at me like... No, you say bow and stern, apparently. The sun is setting right now. It is absolutely beautiful. I've only been here for a couple of hours and I already feel this immense sense of tranquility. I go to bed very happy tonight. I was worried this morning that I forgot to pack something important or about sailing in general, but as soon as I got here, everything fell into place. It's so quiet out here, so peaceful. I like it. If the wind is good, we set sail tomorrow. It's the first morning on the boat. I get out of my bunk and up to the deck, where Captain is already having breakfast. Do you want any tea? You don't want yes, tea, right? Sure. Yes, please. Sure? Yes. 100%. <laughs> no, I'm glad it is like that. I'm so tired of people saying, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I get pissed off. I have the most pleasant bread and jam I have ever eaten. It hasn't really sunk in that this is where I'm going to be spending the next few weeks. Everything is still very new to me and getting ready in the morning has never been so interesting. There are so many cool artifacts on this boat and God knows where they're from. I finish getting ready with the most important thing, sunscreen, and then we go into the village to run some errands. We really are in the middle of the Portuguese countryside. I mean, we walk for five minutes and see everything there is to see here. The cemetery, the one gas station, and that's it. We reach the edge of the village. There is a tractor that just drove by, so there's dust everywhere, but we just walked to the edge of the village and we're just picking up quinces from the trees. Which ones are right? The ones with the colors? The red one. Do you like marmalade? Yes, I do. Made from oranges? Yes. Do you make some yourself? I've got some that's about 10 years old. Wow. They get better with time without marmalade. After picking up some fresh oranges, we're gonna go into the market. It's Saturday, so they have fresh fruit and vegetables. It's crazy how we just walk 200 meters and we've seen everything oh, there is to see already. A market, a cemetery, a you petrol pump. Falling. Once we got back to the boat, I washed my hands and Captain told me it was 11 o'clock. Coffee time. Having some coffee and some cake. The wind, see? There it is. Our wind. Coming. There's a lot of curious people here. You know, it's not every day that you see like a boat like this. come, go in. What's your name? My name is Marta. My name is Marta. <laughs> so cute. The kiddos want to have a tour, so I'm going to show them. Come. <laughs> Once they left, it was finally time for us to leave as well, and Captain turned on the engine. Now, you want to go? Untie the boat. Untie the boat? Yeah. Push, push out. Push out, yeah. 
So now you've got to push full blast. We're moving forward. Okay, we're not actually sailing because there's the motor running. The wind came and it was time to set sail. So we're going to be putting up the sails now. <laughs> Let's do this. Captain tells me to pull on the blue line. So I blindly followed his instructions. But God, was it heavier than I expected. Pentagon. It's as old as the hills. Mm -hmm. All the symbols in the world. That's humans. The arms, the head, the legs. Here, you gotta hold. Okay. I'm steering the ship, trying to at least. <laughs> We've been on the water for about three hours now. We've been using the motor because the wind isn't in our favor right now. The wind was not picking up and it was slowly starting to get frustrating, but we continued moving down the river towards Lisbon. And for that, we needed to cross four bridges. Plenty of time for Captain to tell me lots of stories, including the one behind the knots that are used to measure speed in the sailing world. And the minute the guy said, sand out, they would count the knots. Now we're still using knots from those knots, tighten that line. 500, 600 years ago. Even though we weren't sailing properly yet, I was enjoying it. I was learning a lot and soon we reached the first bridge. Almost there. Going under our first bridge. <laughs> 5 p.m. and the wind has still not picked up. We're not very happy about it because we're using up a lot of our fuel. And now we're reaching our second bridge right here. I feel like I've already learned so much in the past couple hours and I'm forgetting everything, but I love learning, I love trying new things. And it's also really fascinating to dive into Captain's life and learn about what his life is like. It's so different to anything I've ever done myself. We continue cruising down the river for hours and soon the sun starts setting and the water and sky turn bright orange and pink. An incredible explosion of colors. We'd had a very long day, so Captain decided to call it a night. We dropped the anchor, turned on the deck lights so that other boats can see us, and I went straight to bed. 4 a.m. I wake up to the loud sound of a chain. It's Captain pulling up the anchor, so I rush up to the deck. I don't understand why exactly we're moving so early, but he tells me it has something to do with the tide. We continue moving for a few hours and pass under the last two bridges all the way to Lisbon. The sun is gonna start rising soon. It's almost 6 a.m. I've been steering most of the time. We just went past Lisbon. That's Bellum Tower. It's a very famous landmark. Now we are very definitely in the Atlantic. And at eight o'clock, after moving for hours, we finally came to a standstill. I was tired and cold and wet from all the fog, very ready to go back to bed. Good morning, everybody. We are just southwest of Lisbon, anchored here at 8 in the morning today. There is no sign of wind. <sighs> there is one piece of good news, which is we're getting a visitor today. There's a girl that might join us. She's supposed to arrive on that beach sometime soon. Hours of just looking at fishermen. Needs to see how she's walking. Judge her character by that. So, what do you think? Good or not? Good. See that stride? See how she yeah. walks? Yeah. There's no argument there. Wow, wow. I'm excited. There he goes. He's gonna go pick up. Captain is gonna go pick up. Captain's gonna go pick up the flocks of the jets from the beach. Now is my chance to steal the ship. So, yeah, I'm very excited to see what it's gonna be like. Woohoo! Boat is currently stuck on the sand. Captain is pulling it, and a girl is pushing it, and in they go. They're in the water. Actually, no, they're still stuck on the sand. This is so fun. I'm excited to meet her. I hope she's not camera shy. Hi! I got some You did? Wow! What an entrance. Hi! <laughs> nice to meet you. 
Anushka is a skilled sailor, well, a lot more than me, and she's also joining Captain's crew, except that she's going to be crossing all the way to the Caribbean with him. Anushka's brought bread from the land. Wow. Good job, Anushka. It looks great. <laughs> ship we have no wind no visibility it's very foggy around us one way we pass the time when we're just waiting for the wind or for the fog to lift so this is captain salt a pretty big chunk so we're crushing them actually Anushka is crushing them into little crystals and fun fact salt is salty this is my tool for the day it's a hammer I don't know uh, where it's from, it's probably from the other side of the world. Look at that, it looks super cool. And uh, as per captain's instructions, I'm trying not to get it all over the countryside. So now we spread it out and then leave it out to dry in the sun. So uh, captain left us once again. He said that I'm the captain now. And if someone comes, I have to say I'm the captain now. And now I really want someone to come so that I can say it. <laughs> but anyway, we want to see how deep it is. It's a meter every knot, yeah. One, two, five. Five meters. Oh. I want to go for a swim. I think I'm just going to swim here. It's so practical to just have your bed down there. We're trying to see if there's any goggles in here. There must be. There's so much random stuff on this boat. Look at all these surfboards. There's life jackets down there. And this is a pile of coconuts. I'm just nervous that it's going to be so cold. I've done a year of cold showers. This should not be difficult. It's cold. Look at that. Isn't he pretty? This is where I live. I want to see what it's like to see you. Very green. This is crazy. Oh. See? That's where I see. Wow, I'm under the boat. Uh -huh. I'm under the boat. The rest of the day was pretty uneventful. With no sign of wind, we were stuck here. In the afternoon, I read, I slept, we shared a delicious meal and long conversations. And when the sun set, I was able to reflect on the past few days for the first time. I'm so happy and grateful that I took the step to come here. It's not easy to just dive into the unknown alone and completely change your lifestyle overnight. But now I know that it was exactly what I needed. I've been learning so much. I've been so present. I'm happy. This morning, we finally pull up the anchor and leave this place. Honestly, we're bored of the view and the loud noises coming from the beach where a train passes by every five minutes. If you're like me and have never sailed before, here's a crash course based on what I learned. So sailing boats don't use engines. Instead, they harness the power of the wind to move forward. But boats can also go into the wind using aerodynamics. And this really cool crab claw sail right here acts like an airplane wing on its side. With a bit of tide pull and east wind we have, Captain thinks that we can sail across the river to the other side. All right, we're gonna be pulling up the sail. We might finally be leaving this place. I'm very excited. Today, it's Anushka's turn to start pulling on the blue line. And then I jump in because like I said before, this thing is heavy. Captain gave us a very useful tip to pull the line tighter. I'm gonna show you a mountaineering technique. Everybody should learn this one. They go, one guy goes there. Don't pull it out, you pull it out. Pull it out. It's like in like that. And then I tied off the line with the knots that he taught me. Bye bye beach, bye bye train that came every five minutes and woke me up. You shall not be missed. And then, just as we started sailing towards the other side of the river, we looked back at our anchorage and saw... Submarine! Wow, we've only been sailing for like 10 minutes and we see a submarine. I thought submarines were very secretive. How often do you see submarines? Maybe once every 10 years. Really? Depends if you're sitting in front of Cartagena, which is the military hub of Spain, you'd you see, see them every day. Yeah. Evidence! of captain making fun of me. Is that a submarine? Oh, look. <laughs> oh. <laughs> With the little wind we had, we managed to get to the other side very smoothly and decided that we wanted to go on land and explore. Well, we came from over there and now we're here. And the sail is down again. This is the longest I've ever been off land. This feels so weird. What's the longest you've been off land? Probably a week. A week. Tiny little houses. They're like my size. There's a beach here now. This is cool. Don't leave your trash behind, guys. Captain and Anushka wanted to surf. Evolutionary biology says we have to run sometimes. I don't know why, but okay. <laughs> oh, they're still running. Of course, I'm carrying all the stuff. I've left the others. They're gonna go for a surf. It's so weird to be back on land after two or three days. I don't know how much time. I'm not counting anymore. I guess uh, they could just leave without me. They could go back on the ship and just sail away, but I don't know. We've uh, kind of formed a little family. Caroline. 
Argentina. She's Brazilian. I was just walking on the beach casually and I thought, you know, I really want to go for a swim. This girl seems nice. I'm just gonna ask her if she can keep my stuff as I go for a swim. And turns out she's super nice. Hi everyone, enjoying the beach together. By the way, Carol is a life savior because she gave me sunscreen. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet one thing that I've learned very very quickly when you travel by yourself you're actually never by yourself because you meet so many incredible people so now I need to find the crew again there's so many surfers out there but I have no idea where they are I'm trying to look out for a very tall man yeah I've lost them I've been walking for half an hour and I can't find them so I think I'm just gonna walk back to the ship is that really you is that Anushka I can see in the distance I found her! We try to find everyone. Yeah. Oh, I don't know Oh, you lost him too? Yeah. Oh. We made it back to the boat and the captain has gone back. So he hasn't left without us. That's good news. Captain came to pick us up in the dinghy and clumsy is my second name. So of course I had to injure myself as I got in. That's gonna bruise. Yeah. Ooh, feels like um, back home. I've only been away for like two hours and I already missed this place. Time to shower off. Get rid of all the salt water and the sunscreen. We try to always rinse off the seawater from our bodies and I stood in my shorts so that I could rinse them too without wasting too much water. Okay, we're gonna play Scrabble. We have no wind, so we play Scrabble. Do you consider yourself a Scrabble expert? Me? I'm a fanatic. <laughs> what about you, Anushka? I'm a... an amateur. Really? <laughs> well, these are the letters that I have. M is not a word. If M is not a word, I will eat this pear. <laughs> you already started eating it. <laughs> you never know. You're not gonna find it because it's not there. Is M a word? Comment down below. Verdict? I'm gonna eat this apple and I'm gonna apologize. I'm gonna eat a humble pie. I've been a very loud, brash young man who's trying to pull rank on you poor people. Him doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm ragging. That monster score coming up in two seconds. You're gonna scream at me. No, it's not a word! See, there it is. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. I just found that literally in the last thing, two that seconds. That is so good. Rose. That is absolutely horrible good. Thank you. I'm so proud of myself. The double word. This is a monster. This is like something like 50 points. Oh, yeah. Don't make any mistakes then. These are, oh, I'm going to take over again. Once again, I caught myself looking out for the wind from time to time. It's kind of like a sixth sense you develop. Although it is a lot stronger for Captain, who seemed to always have his radar switched on. It's not even wind. My nephew and I, we go sailing together. So on his last holidays, I said, come on, boy, we're doing a boys only. We grabbed the surfboards and I looked at the weather and the gods were smiling at us. That was so beautiful, really. I, have, I, was, I could not believe it. We had 12 days, we dived on the spot. Some of the fish were 50, 60 kilos looking at us in the Caribbean, it's a secret spot. We found a cave, it was just a mind blow. The weather would change and we would get north wind and we would just breeze back to school, like we just on the jaunt. So we went downwind, zoop, there's something really special about spending days on end with strangers. Just a few days ago, Captain Anushka and I didn't know of each other's existence. And now, as we keep playing in the afternoon sun with the constant gentle rocking of the boat, I realize that we're no longer strangers. And in this very moment, we're all waiting for the same thing. Waiting for the wind gods to bless us so that we can finally begin our adventure. Oh, here! The sailing! <laughs> wow! We just went a little bit insane. Oh right? my gosh. Look the wind! Dolphins! Nothing in it. I'm gonna do my first night watch. 